Hi, I'm Patrick the Free Will Baptist, and I appreciate you for watching this video. Here today, I got a Life magazine. It's a, uh, it's a October 8th, 1956 edition, and uh, wouldn't you know it, in this edition, they have the U.S. Masons. I hear so many people try and tell me, oh, now, Patrick, the Masons, they're good Christian men. Such good Christian men. They help the, the children, such good Christian men. Dressed like this, they look like a bunch of reprobate Pharisees. So anyway, um, the, uh, I will have scanned all the pages in this and we'll have them provided in the description box. So uh, feel free to uh, have a nice look at it. I hope you enjoy my production. Now my daughter's going to be tickled that I used her little desk here in the production of one of my videos. Um, just bear with me. I'm posting a link to where you can see all the scanned images of what I'm showing you here in this video. But just to show you, this is a uh, Life Magazine issue October 8, 1956. And this has to do with the U.S. Masons. I cannot believe they put this stuff in here. Okay, so this image right here um, under it, it says that this is the dedication of Solomon's Temple. It's reenacted by Brooklyn Royal Arch Masons, Orient Chapter 138. This ritual, never before photographed, is part of is part of ceremony award awarding most excellent master degree to prospective Royal Arch Masons, High Priest of Jews in the center right there. They say that this guy right here is the high priest of Jews. Kneels before cherubim decorated ark of the covenant flanked by members of the Jewish tribes. Oh, a big huge idol. King Solomon stands before the Bible background surrounded by princes, workmen, and court attendants. Filthy, idolatry, hardcore. You guys make the mother whore, the Vatican, the Roman Catholic whore. You make her so proud. But then over here to the uh, left, we've got some people eating at a cross table, right? <clears throat> and under that, that says that that's the feast of the Paschal Lamb, or Passover Lamb, really. And that's celebrated by Brooklyn's Aurora Greta chapter of Rose Crooks. And these member of the eight, these are the members are the 18th degree Scottish Rite Masons. Ritual is done every year on I don't know how you pronounce that word. Thursday, it's M A U N D Y, and then Thursday, whatever that is. The 13 Masons wearing dark robes are and are seated at cross. Uh, and seated at a cross-shaped table represent participants at the Last Supper. The ceremony combining Jewish Passover and Christian observance lasts one and a half hours and includes music, prayer, recitation, and it ends with candles being put out one by one and also paying homage to the beast. <laughs> But let me go ahead and read here where it's gotten this article. And uh, there it's a title. You see, this is the busy, brotherly world of Freemasonry. Now, everybody says how Christian this is. Let me prove to you how satanic it is. The ancient fraternity is thriving in America. In a country full of fraternal orders, the oldest and by far biggest is Freemasonry. One out of every 12 adult American males, some 4 million of them, are Masons. Wow, they're saying every 1 in 12 adult men are Masons. Now, you know, if you've ever listened to Tex Mars, and I haven't in like forever, but before I was saved, I was actually listening to that loon, and his attitude is he just about everybody he meets is a Mason, and, well, depending on where you live, it kind of does feel like that. But anyway... Subscribing to Masonic ideals and mor morality and brotherhood.
taking delight in its secrecy and ritual, fi and finding comfort in the brotherhood of the ancient order. Their numbers have, in the past 10 years, increased by almost 10 million, and the membership of U.S. Masons today is twice that of the rest of the world. They have enlarged their circle by bringing wives, sons, and daughters into the allied organization. The Masons describe their order, whose full title is Ancient, Free, and Accepted Masons, as a system of morality based on allegory illustrated by symbols, a worldwide organization which grew out of the guilds of stone workers who built Europe's medieval cathedrals. You know, the people that was building the Catholic temples. Then they just like, let's just go make another religion of ours. And like I said, you know, come right out of the mother whore. That's one of the abomination and harlots, Freemasonry. And they're controlled by the Jesuits. You should check out my other video where my grandfather was a 33 degree Shriner. And he was also a four, in the 4th degree of the Knights of Columbus, which is a Jesuit sect of uh, Freemasonry. Because most want to teach that Catholics aren't Freemasonry, but do a little research on the Knights of Columbus and you'll find out that... Uh, Catholics and Jesuits, they, they infect masonry, so they, they drive that uh, cult. Freemasonry is open to any, any man who believes in a supreme being, not the Lord Jesus Christ. So right there is enough that Time Magazine has told you anybody that says Freemasonry is Christian is a big fat liar that they lied to your face that all they have to do is promise that they're not an atheist. That is the only requirement for being a Freemason is that you're not a biblical fool. There are other things that make you an actual biblical fool but you know it says in the Bible that the fool has said there's no God in his heart. Well, you know, Freemasons too even actually accept that. And they say that you can't get in their cult unless, you, unless you'll agree to worship their fake bastard god. They don't want no atheists. <clears throat> there are Mohammedan and Buddhist Masons. Oh, let's back up again though. Now listen, if you call these people your brother, and you think that Jesus Christ is the only way, Gee, somebody's talking out of both sides of their head because they're a liar. Jesus Christ said that he is the only way. There are Mohammedan and Buddhist Masons, but few Catholics, since the Catholic Church forbids this. And we'll get to that. Freemasonry came to the U.S. about 1730 and is numbered among its members 13 U.S. presidents from George Washington to Harry Truman. And now so many will say how George Washington, he was such a Christian. No, he was such a Satanist. Now I want everybody to realize, I didn't find this off the internet. This is in a box that I discovered that's been put up for 25, 30 or longer years. I have no idea how long it's been in storage. But it's a 1956 issue of Time Magazine. And you just go and uh, do some research online and see if I don't have the real thing. <clears throat> So, you cannot call me an internet conspiracy theorist because I'm actually bringing and presenting to you real factual documents that prove Freemasonry is New Age Satanism for dummies. Because you just have to not believe your Bible to fall for this. Or maybe think that once saved, always saves the gospel. The somewhat austere and intellectual caste of European Freemasonry has been embroidered in America with the rich ritual of and color which life shows in photographs on these pages. It has also been produced a com or also has produced a complex organized or organizational structure explained on pages 106 and 107. We'll get there to that. The basis of Freemasonry is the local lodge called the Blue Lodge, to which all Masons belong. Now, guys, that's a starting point and the first three degrees of Masonry, because before you can go any further, first you got to go through your hieramic legend. Now, this is my silliness for it because it's it's only a big jackass game. A bunch of guys dress up like faggots, and they play this little game. And the uh, the candidate, he uh, he takes on this Hiram Abiff guy's uh, role, 
and he runs around and he's like, oh no, they're going to try and steal the secret. And then these these three other Mason losers, they they attack him because because they want they want him bad, you know. They're gross. <laughs> But anyway, and the, the third guy, he whacks him upside the head with a big old whipping stick and kills him dead as a doornail. And then they're like, we need the password. We need the password for our secret god. I think it's Jehabulon or some stupid thing. Or maybe it's Maha Bone. I don't know. I'm, I'm just being dramatic and retarded about it. Because really, this stuff is about as stupid as it gets. These people play dumb games. But anyway, what I, the actual ritual I'm talking about... The Hiramic legend is where they're baptized in the belief of Hiram Abiff and where the this Hiram Abiff is their picture of their fake God, Jesus. They mock Jesus with their Hiram Abiff teachings about being baptized in him. And so after this guy's been killed by these three other loser masons, you know, it's all ritualistic. Um, then they bring him back to life with some stupid password and grip. And uh, then he's been raised. But anyway, that's what you deal with when you find a Master Mason. Master, huh? We know that Jesus Christ forbids calling people Master, but we'll get we'll go on. <clears throat> like I said, anybody that starts in Freemasonry, they start in what's called the Blue Lodge. In my county, they actually call it a Masonic Temple. Now, what's a temple? It's where you go worship a god, ain't it? Yep. But not the right one all the but not the right god. Blue lodges are organized into state groups, each ruled by a general master, or I mean a grand master. Advanced degrees of masonry are offered by the Scottish Rite, which is which has northern and southern jurisdictions, and the York Rite Masons can and frequently do take advanced degrees in both rites. But though rituals of Freemasonry become elaborate, the trappings, <laughs> the trappings, ornate the antics of some of the applied organizations pretty outlandish. The Masons are earnest. <clears throat> earnest, poise, and dedicated men believing in helping each other as brothers and learn in, in learning the fundamental truths, the observance of which tends to promote stability of character, conservation, and good citizenship. Good citizenship, huh? <laughs> um, I don't know about character, but a lot of the Masons that I actually know, and I'm talking about personally, but not every single one. But, you only know them so far. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't talk good of their character, especially not due to Freemasonry. There have been a lot of crooked dealings and such. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Let's just talk about what I found right here in this thing. My goodness, we've all seen this picture on Google before. Well, it's also appeared in Time Magazine, so somebody didn't draw it on the internet, guys. Right here it is. Um, this is just filthy as hell. I don't know what else to say, but when I talk about people putting on a big jackassery show, I mean, ain't this picture a picture of it? So anyway, um, there'll be links so that you can see this. Um, I mean, you can see these on YouTube, or these are already available on Google. This is nothing new, but this does prove that this isn't an internet conspiracy here, guys. Time Magazine printed this up. So here we have Masons Continued, the, the titled hierarchy and the trappings of office. Or, yeah. Trappings. That's right, trapped like in a spider's web. Lies and deceit and wickedness. Got the Sovereign Grand Commander of the Scottish Rite of the Northern Jurisdiction is George E. Bushnell, former Michigan Supreme Court Justice. You catching this stuff? He wears robes of the 33-degree Supreme Council. He guides 460,000 Scottish Rite Masons. You're telling me that our justice system isn't corrupt that people in politics aren't masons my foot 
most eminent Grand Master of the Grand Encampment of Knights Templar, Major General Retired Walter A. Delaminar, is the head of the three highest orders of the York Rite, has no jurisdiction over other orders. He is also a 33 degree Mason. Grand Master of Pennsylvania, Charles H. Nish, is an engineer of Philadelphia, wears ordinary wears ornate version of Master Mason's apron. He is a Grand, Ma Grand Master of Pennsylvania's Grand Lodge, which rules all the Blue Lodges in the state. This is the Egyptian Hall of the city's Masonic Temple, considered the nation's most beautiful. Though decors of the lodge rooms vary, all have the same layout. Master's chair faces west. Bible is on the altar surrounded by three greater lots. Really? So, uh, tell me again, guys, how Christian is this? I mean, like, they idolize the Egyptian iniquity. I mean, antiquity, as they want to call it, but this kind of crap right here is filthy. And he's like, I worship the devil. Look how good I am. So here we got Sovereign Grand Commander of Scottish Rite Southern Jurisdiction is ex state judge Luther A. Smith of Mississippi. Oh, are you telling me that both Sovereign Grand Commanders of of the Scottish Rite, the northern, and, the northern and southern jurisdictions, were both judges. Wow. Eagle he wears is insignia of office. He heads four hundred fifty thousand Scottish Rite Masons in thirty three southern and western states. And somehow we expect to get. Just trials. And uh, gr this guy down here is the grand, the general grand high priest. Yep. He thinks he's some kind of general high priest. Of the Royal Arch, Tom Q. Ellis, court clerk in Jackson, Mississippi, stands between pillars hung with the Mark Master aprons. Royal Arch and the York Rite, the largest body within Freemasonry with 180,000 members. Oh, with 800,000 members. Oh, man. Now, remember, I'll be scanning all these pages and posting the links in the description, so feel free. Job's daughters over here. This is disgusting, guys. Install new officers of Bethel Number no. Three, St. Paul, Minnesota. The honored Queen Sally Ho Hodgins leads the group in hymns. The junior and senior Princess Barbara Brumer and Judy Johnson kneel with other new officers. Ex-officers stand behind them. Daughters of the Nile. In Omaha, Nebraska, Civic Auditorium salute new Supreme Queen Miss Ruth C. Deaton seated on the throne. Five marching patrols in Egyptian costumes put arms up, keep formation. On stage with the Queen and the past Supreme Queen seated in the front stage are 110. But we're supposed to believe how all this is good and Christian and godly. No, it's ungodly and wicked. And I always think about Isaiah 5.20 when people try to tell me how good their wickedness is. And I'm just thinking, woe unto you. Temple queens wearing gold coronets. Oh, and not to mention, I mean, why does people want to think that Egyptians had something to do with Christians? I mean, the Egyptians held the Hebrew under slavery. But we're supposed to believe that's Christian. And I'm just mean for, for believing otherwise.
Temple Queens wearing gold coronets. They have just received the year's secret password <laughs> from Miss Deaton. Man at altar is the drill master. Daughters were founded by Shriner's wives in 1913 to acquire philosophy of life, enabling them to, enabling them, when shadow lengthened, to look back on life well spent. Well, I bet that little quote there is not much comfort for all them poor women that are in hell for believing such wickedness. And pageantry for all occasions, much like the blazing color and convention hijinks associated with Freemasonry, come from Masons organized for purpose which are not basically Masonic and form groups sponsored by Masons. There are over 60 such groups ranging from decims made up of deaf men to the low 12 clubs which give money for Masonic funerals. Though many groups are organized primarily to promote social pleasures, they all retain the seriousness of purpose that Masons can never completely forget. The Grotto supports cerebral palsy clinics, the tall cedars of Lebanon fight muscular dystrophy, and the Shrine maintains 17 crippled children's hospitals so they can all hide behind children and say, look at us, we're good people, don't you dare think we're wicked. Because that's exactly what they do with that filth. And I've already pointed out in another video how Shriners hospitals are wicked. There is no such thing as a good work without the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is no Shriners hospitals that teach the gospel. But now they will teach you how to get into the shrine. I've exposed this with their website. They do not offer the gospel. Oh, and not to mention, they don't actually just heal. It's a research hospital. You know, just like how animals have to get researched on. They research on your children. Good night. Nowhere is this serious... <clears throat> nowhere is this seriousness of purpose more emphasized than in youth organizations that are sponsored directly by lodges. The Rainbow Girls teach right living and thinking. The Demolay strives to create leaders and develop character. This interest in young people is fruitful for the Masons. Every year, many Demolay boys become Masons, and Rainbow Girls come and, and Rainbow Girls and Job's daughters move into the Eastern Star, so they can pervert their lives and send them to hell. Oh, and yeah, and, and have fun lying to them and, and stepping all over them while they're doing it, because I mean, if you guys haven't been able to tell, the higher degree Masons just seek control over the low, lower degree. Manly P. Hall said that they're all meant to be, that they're just sheep meant to be sheared in their ignorance. The Masons of the lower degrees. Over here in this corner here, we've got the Rainbow Girls and Stall Officers of Washington, Idaho, Alaska, Grand Assembly in Pasco, Washington. High School Gym, the new officers standing in semicircle. The Order of the Demolay over here. Holds a flower talk cer yeah, that's what it says. Holds a flower talk ceremony in Granite City, Illinois, watched by band candidate. Here's talk on motherhood and gets flower. <laughs> well, he's kneeling before an altar before another man. Wicked. You can't say anything good about this, to be honest with you. Once you investigate what it truly is, you know it's satanic. And so here we have a guy dressed in a big queen outfit. I mean, this guy looks like a flaming faggot. I mean, only a retard would... I mean... Come on, seriously. What guy that keeps a sober mind's gonna wear some flaming queen outfit like that? Well, let's read down here and see what this book says some kind of reprobate would wear such a thing. A happy tall cedar. Oh, wearing a huge feather decoration on his back. Man, did Elton John get his look from you? 
Man, I knew I saw that look somewhere. No wonder I called you a faggot. You must like Elton John. Plucks his bass fiddle at a parade drill in Trenton, New Jersey, Shrine Auditorium. Randolph Hamilton, a member of the Tall Cedars of Lebanon, plays in the Camden Forest No. 5 String Band. Hamilton, an electric electrician, is also a 32nd degree mason and a shriner. The Tall Cedars of Lebanon organized primarily to have fun, draws its, draws its name from the trees used in the building of King Solomon's Temple. No, look at that. Now we know that that's a Freemasonic symbol to, to, see, to see two swords over a Bible. Now we see who's doing that, huh? Got this guy. I'll marry you, baby. Here's your ring. Wait till we get out of here. And everybody's like, oh, how cute they look. Ha, ha, ha. I can't help it, guys. Like, I mean... You have to be stupid to put on with this, seriously. The dramatic rituals for the two degrees. And, th and this is uh, Blue Lodge Masonry. The, sta the, staging, the staging of the most important ritual for the a Mason is shown at the rot. The procedure by which he becomes a third degree or master Mason to many Masons, the most coveted honor is bestowed through the secret ritual reenacted below. The initiation in the 33rd degree Scottish Rite. The third degree ritual is inspired by the biblical story of Hiram, Hiram, Hiram Abiff. Like I was telling you earlier about the Hiramic legend. Just read. You can just read with me there. Through the biblical story of Hiram Abiff, except they don't actually have a biblical story of Hiram Abiff. Because Hir Hiram was not named Abiff in the Bible. Hiram Abiff, greatest mason of his time, was sent by his king, Hiram of Tyre, to help King Solomon build his temple. According to Masonic legend, when the temple was finished, Hiram Abiff was killed and buried in the temple. In Hiram's story, Masons and Morals on Judge, Justice and Fidelity. In Hiram's story, Masons find morals on justice and infidelity. <laughs> well, I got another video about that. You can watch it. The 33rd degree ritual is simpler. The degree being conferred with a ring. This year, 174 Masons were given the 33rd degree each becoming a sovereign grand inspector general in the Scottish Rite. Among them was an earnest breach. Was earnest breach. And that was in life of February 28, 1950. Oh, who was also in life issue of February 28, 1955. Chairman of Ford's board of directors. After the ritual breach, a mason since 1924 called it the absolute ultimate in honors. Whatever. And then right here where we have other men bowing for other men. The third degree ritual is dramatized by Hartford, Connecticut Masons. Here, temple workmen kneel before King of Tyre, Solomon, Hiram Abiff, as done here. The candidate gets the third degree by taking part in the performance. <laughs> performance are up. See, here's the biggest problem with uh, Masons. See, they don't want to just stay in their temple with their filthy wickedness. You see right here in this picture, we got marching to church, Lexington Masons with all with aprons leaving temple. Background building with, with Belfry right here. This building, that they're leaving their, their Masonic temple there. And then that, lo that lodge goes to the church together annually. So they leave their, their temple to go to the Lord. They leave their temple, just like it says, to go to a church. So they can infect people with their wickedness. So they march into church with those aprons and everything on, huh? Wow. 
It's not really a church, though, because a biblical church is Bible believers, not a uh, brick-and-mortar building, because Jesus never is going to come back for any buildings other than destroy it all. At service in the Methodist church, Masons sing hymns. Ministers studying to be a Mason. Each year, Lodge attends services at different church. Well, I'd make sure if I saw that going on in whatever church I was in to march right on right back out of there. But they're not really churches. They're mostly today, places that refer to themselves as churches are just 501c3 living creatures of the state. Just dying for you to worship them. Swapping stories, Tom Kane, acting worshipful master and Harger Lester relax after lodge meeting. Later the members ate downstairs. Eastern Star members salute in the lodge room as <coughs> Dolores Ray takes flag to its stand. All orders meet in the same lodge room. Oh look. They got that filthy thing too. My sonic swastika ain't enough for them. Did y'all, now I don't actually uh, approve of a Christian flag, but did you know that Masonic Lodge will not allow one of those in there? That's right, because they don't want to offend their Mohammedan brothers. Because, you know, they're not really Christians. They're liars. So now, Masons, they're on a secret password game to uh, gain the, no the secret name of their fake bastard god. Which, uh, you know is uh, Jehobulon or Mahabon or something stupid like that. And they also believe that it's so secret that they can't even say it by themselves. They gotta have two other men standing with them because they're, they're too terrified to say it. Because it, it's so secret, you know, that they gotta have three men to call on their God because they can't do it by themselves. It's a puny God you guys serve. You just, it sounds like to me you need reassurance from other idiots like you. <clears throat> Blue Lodge Mason's core. The heart of the U.S. Freemasonry li lies are, uh, in 16,000 local lodges called Blue Lodges. Every Mason, regardless of rank, belongs to a Blue Lodge where Masonry's basic activities take place. In the Lexington, Michigan district, a fourth of its 2,500 residents belong to the Masonic organizations. <laughs> That's about like where I live, too. 21 of the town's 39 businessmen, 7 of 15 male high school teachers, 2 of 5 councilmen are Blue Lodge members. There are four other Masonic orders in town, Royal Arch, Royal and Select Masters, Knights Templar, and Eastern Star. Some Masons belong to all. Masons enjoy each other's company, sometimes find it useful in business, I bet, because uh, I've seen how that goes, like, in a lot of small towns, businesses don't work unless uh, unless they work in the lodge. Almost indispensable in social life. If there was suddenly no Masonic order in, Le order in Lexington, said one, there would be a void hard to fill. Well, that's because they're void of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they don't got anything but stupid ritualism religion just like the catholic church meaningless and dead this guy right here is guarding the door charles coburn the lodges tyler he bars entry to the meeting named tyler is from the mason who tiled roofs thus hiding the building's interior down here we've got a new mason bill renna and a factory clerk shows his first degree entered apprentice apron to Charles Coburn. White skin, white lambskin apron denotes innocence. Innocence, all right. Look, they're, they, they wear that over their male part to declare that they're innocent. They're virtuous and pure, they claim. And here's a list of Grand Masters and Allied Groups and all that, you know. I am not reading all that. That's just a bunch of nonsense gobbledygook. I'll scan the page, and if you want it, you can look at it. Here we've got the Order's history here and abroad. Throughout its 239-year history, Freemasonry found that its secrecy and rituals have both attracted members and 
arouse enemies. <laughs> when cathedral building in England decreased in the mid 17th century, many guilds of stone workers, known as Freemasons, apparently because they were free to move from town to town, became purely social groups. They often initiated non Masons as members, calling them speculative Masons. In 1717, Four London lodges, composed largely of speculative masons, formed the Grand Lodge of England. After decades of rig religious bitterness, many Englishmen now found comfort in a moral system based on unchanging building tools. The comfort, the compass, square, and level, and embraced an order that saw God as the grand architect of Satanism or Luciferianism. Wherever Englishmen went forth, they founded Masonic lodges, enlightened Europeans certain of human perfection, perfectibility, and distrustful of ancient institutions like the Catholic Church. Yeah, right, because they're actually infected by it. Joined among them were Frederick the Great, Voltaire, and Mozart. And let me tell you guys something. I've got this in another video, but... Mozart is also famous for singing, for writing a tune called Lick My Something. And, uh, I am not going to say that word. But, uh, I will tell you, there are people that, that like Steve Anderson that teach that rock music's evil. But he likes M Mozart. Mozart was a mason. But strange costumes and historic flavor of Freemasonry made the lower degree classes suspicious. In London, Masonic parades were stoned. The antagonism to the Roman Catholic Church that grew with the Enlightenment was reflected in anti-clerical attitudes of leading Masons. <laughs> this aroused the hostility of Pope Clement the Seventh, who in 1738 denounced the order for it they were not acting ill they would not have such hatred of the law lodges in catholic nations were closed often by mobs today though a few catholics are masons the church never reversed its historical position any catholic who takes part in masonic re religious rituals or swears masonic oaths of secrecy that could run counter the catholic concept of confessional has automatically excommunicated himself and that's 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 sad that even the catholics teach that but the jesuits they've infected freemasonry but i've already went on about that and i need to just go on with go on with reading you know right down here's a picture of it and you know the fight with the church is uh satirized by an 1884 cartoon in Puck magazine depicting an argument between the Pope and Masons. Puck says they are like two old women scolding each other. Lots of noise, but no one's ever hurt. <laughs> yeah, they're two whores, all right. Here we've got... Great Kidnapping Fur took place in 1826 over the disappearance of William Morgan, a renegade mason who was supposedly abducted and then killed by masons. Harper's drawing shows masons forcing Morgan into a coach. Um, they also might have killed Jojo Smith, too, who was a 33-degree mason. He went and uh, shared all his secrets in the Mormon temple. and Well, he was, in a two, he was on the second floor of a two-story jail, and uh, the one jailer, he took a hike... While, uh, while some other people did him in. But anyway, I don't really know because I wasn't there. So let's just go on down. Brought to America by British colonialists, Freemasonry with its emphasis on brotherhood enlisted many leading colonial Americans who saw the, in the order a, a vehicle for establishing the principles of liberty and equality. It grew into a patriotic movement. <laughs> And you, uh, and you all know that I teach that patriotism is Satanism because nobody can be a patriot today and claim to be a Christian too because if you really want to stand by the flag and everything this nation is, this nation is covered in the blood of all those butchered babies that are aborted every single day. Get real with yourself. Repent and believe the truth.
and some historians believe that the Indians who took part in the Boston Tea Party were Masons from Boston Street Andrews Lodge. Wow, really? Indians? On the day of a lodge meeting, Masons were observed going into the Green Dragon Tavern, their meeting place. Indians were later seen leaving for the wharf. During the Revolutionary War, Washington, who said the order's goal was to promote the happiness of the human race, favored ceremonial... favored creation of military lodges for soldiers. There are at least 11 of such lodges, the most famous being the American Union Lodge No. 1. At Valley Forge, Washington helped initiate Lafayette into masonry. But everybody keeps saying about Washington was such a Christian. Washington was a mason. He was an agent of the devil. But this will prove that the uh, forefathers of this wicked country were not Christian they were Freemasons. And I appreciate that at least Tom was publishing this to tell everybody. Because uh, 1956 was well before days of the internet. Freemasonry. Freemasonry's only U.S. crisis came in 1826 when ex-Mason William Morgan disappeared after publishing his Lodge Secrets. Masons were accused of kidnapping Morgan and in the result, former or Fuhrer and Anti-Masonic Party was formed. In 1832, the Anti-Masonic Party ran a presidential candidate, William Wirt, against Andrew Jackson, a Mason. Wirt caught carried the state of Vermont, but nothing else. As soon as the anti-Masonic uh, political party and soon the anti-Masonic political party died out. After 1832, Freemasonry began to lose its political tinge, taking on the social and more emphatically fraternal character it has today. This helped its steady growth. There were 200,000 members when the Civil War began in 1861. During the war, over 100 military lodges were formed. After the Civil War, they helped in the Order's period of great growth. By 1900, there were over 800,000 members. Famous Worshipful Masters the U.S. included Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. Franklin, first command, first Grand Master of Pennsylvania, also joined Paris Lodge when he was an ambassador of France, helped to initiate Voltaire into Freemasonry. Washington, worshipful master of Alexandria, Virginia Lodge, was, zealous, was a zealous mason for 47 years. Some masons started a movement to make him national Grand Master of all U.S. masons to be united in a national Grand Lodge. But Massachusetts Masons did not consent to the idea, or consent, and the idea died. Oh, is that like when they were trying to make him a, a king? Because that's the way history had it, if I, if I remember from my schooling, right? That's the end of the articles about Freemasonry in this issue. <laughs> if you still want to believe that Freemasonry is Christian, look, I can't force you to accept the truth, okay? There's a lot of people that just want to believe lies and be damned. But the fact remains that uh, Freemasonry is not a Christian organization. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate you watching my videos. Check my YouTube page. I have several, many more on Freemasonry. I, I, I do more... I, I provide more than enough knowledge to a person to show another person how Freemasonry conflicts far, far too much with the actual faith on the Lord Jesus Christ to even pretend you could be a Christian. So anyway, thank you. God bless you. Friends and enemies alike, I love you people. And I pray that the Lord guide you and bless you. Only in the name of the precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.